On this edition of Let's Explore This, we are going to be discussing this building, Hall's Cabin. This photo, it is just one of a number I will be using for this episode. However, I will not be taking you there. Not for this one. No way. I could, but getting there requires more time and money that I do not have at this moment, and here's why. Take a good hard look at this map. There is, at the bottom there, Fontana Lake. Then, up north, far up north, is the J.H. Cress or Hall Cabin. That is a good six or so miles needed to reach that destination and back all in one day, while also spending a couple of hours shooting a video. I guess it might be doable, but would be very close to being difficult, at least all in a day. You see, the location is unreachable without a boat. Well, I guess you could take some trails from, like, another area and hike maybe, I don't know, 15 or more miles. The easiest way, though, is to take a boat across that lake. Still, a hike of a good six or even seven miles or so would be needed. Then, there is that hour or two shooting the footage. After that would be the hike back to reach the boat. A ferry across the lake via boat? That costs about $50 round trip. And not only that, I would have to reach the boat by 4 p.m. So, folks, this one, It is simply going to be done via a kind of photo essay. Now, this cabin, it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places way back in 1976. Therefore, it is definitely one important cabin, luckily. The National Register document for this one, which is what I will be using for most of this episode, is not too long. Good, because... I only have so many photos, though from a few different sources, the links for which will be at the end. This building, erected by a man named Hall in 1910, was remodeled in 1940. Originally, it was the cabin on a mountain farm. In 1940, however, a hunting lodge was established by J. H. Cress. The cabin was then partially remodeled. Now, the area around which this cabin sits, Bone Valley, is not far from the former town of Medlin. In the Crest's name, it was very popular in that area. Prior to the establishment of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, hundreds of families inhabited the coves and hollows along the creeks of the mountains. Grist mills dotted the creek banks. There were schools in most valleys, and there were a few post offices, stores, and churches. Around the turn of the century, logging companies came to the mountains. They established huge mills and camps. In doing so, they went on to clear-cut vast amounts of country. There were, at that time, several hundred people living in the Bone Valley vicinity. In the establishment of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and the construction of Fontana Dam and its huge lake, yes, that did all cause the inhabitants to abandon the area. The area around Bone Valley and its major watercourse, Hazel Creek, was characterized as was much of the mountain area, by isolation. For generations, contact with the outside world was limited. There was inbreeding, as well as much distilling and or drinking of moonshine whiskey. Illiteracy was prevalent and violence was common. Okay, I'm not so sure about that. That kind of paints a rather negative picture, which probably does not belong in a National Register document. I mean, there may have been, but this info does come from the 1970s. Still, 
I find it a rather biased convenience that the terms like isolation and inbreeding were used in referencing southern mountain communities. It is not much different than saying cities are violent and crime is rampant. For all its shortcomings, however, the area was one of generally self-reliant and independent people. They formed small farms, herded cattle on the high mountains, and later worked in the logging industry. Today, they are gone from this section of the mountains, and even where their descendants live in the nearby communities, their way of life has disappeared. For example... This picture you have been seeing is a picture of the former town of Medlin. Those cabins and houses you see are long gone. They do not exist anymore, and much of the area has been cleaned out to allow the forest to return to its primal state. Of the buildings that stood along the creeks of the southwestern edge of what is now the park, the Cress Cabin alone remains in its immediate vicinity. It has survived in a fairly good shape, although in need of repair, as of the mid-1970s, I might add, it still exhibits some of the finest features of log construction to be found in the Smokies. Is it in need of repair today in 2021? I don't know. Take a boat, hike down, and find out for yourself. Okay. Let's now delve into the architecture of this thing. So, what this is, is a rectangular building of 24 by 17 feet, with a 6-foot porch strapped across the front. The roof, it is covered with asbestos shingles. Wow, that can't be healthy. Mesothelioma, anyone? But... The walls, they are of split-hewn logs. The corners are dovetail-notched, and all the cracks between the logs, they are unchinked. The gable ends of the building are bored and batten. The building itself, it does rest on masonry piers. Now, folks, I think the time has come to get our hands on the windows. So, there are a total of five windows in the cabin. There are stationary six light windows in the attic. There is supposed to be, in the north room, a four-over-four simple hung window set in the north wall. There is also a three-over-three in the east wall of the same room. Then, In the south room, there is a 6 over 6 single hung window in the east wall. All of the sash components, they are manufactured. Okay, now here is what I see from the collection of photos. This is an interior shot, the only one that I have. It certainly is not the attic. You can easily tell by looking at the doorway there on the right. However... Look at the window on the left. That is just a six-light window to me. According to the description, that is supposed to be in the attic, but here it is on the first floor. So what is going on here? Has that window changed or something? There is no window on this side of the building, though the attic window does appear to be consistent with what is in the description. And yes, I do not have any photos of the rear. However, here is the front end. Both of those windows, which I am assuming separate the rooms, or are supposed to, are six over six. That's fine. One of them is supposed to be. But folks, tell me. Where is the 4 over 4 and the 3 over 3? This is not exactly adding up. What about the doors? Well, there are three doors in the building, 
The main entrance is on the east side of the building, opening into an entryway. There is also a doorway in the north wall of the north room, and one in the west wall of, I guess, that same north room. The doors in the latter are missing. The main door is wooden and holds four panels with butt hinges. All locks and other hardware are missing. Okay, folks, let's take a closer look at this. So here is the front entryway, and here it is from the outside. Well, tell me, where is the door? I mean, yes, it is dark here, kind of dark in this photo. As such, it is a bit hard to tell, but that is not so here. The door? It looks missing. So, tell me, where did it go? Have the interior walls been removed? This does look wide open. Now, for the floors. Well, the floor of the north room is missing. Okay. Now, how can a floor be missing? I suspect there would be a big hole or something. I don't see a missing floor here, but that's what the document says. Maybe it has been repaired. There is this possibility that the angle of this photo does not cover it, though that is unlikely. It covers a bit more than half the building. Okay, so the floor of the south room, it is of one by eight inch sawn board. The floor of the porch in the upstairs room, which I have no photos of, is of random width rough sawn lumber. The floor of the upper room over the sawn joists form the ceiling of the lower portion of the structure, while the upper story has no ceiling. Okay, no ceiling. It certainly has got a roof. Can a roof double as a ceiling? I guess so. Now, there are two 12 by 17 foot rooms downstairs. Well, there are supposed to be, but it looks like that may not be true these days. There is a stairway leading from the lower story beginning just inside from the front door. It consists of nine steps made of pine board. There are no banister or newel posts and upstairs, there is a full room in the attic. The interior walls, all are of hewn log. The stairway, though, luckily, that still does appear present these days. Overall, this is the only remaining building of the Cress Complex. It is near Bone Valley Creek and can be reached only by Jeep up a nine-mile trail from Lake Fontana. Hmm, it may be farther up than I thought. But by Jeep? Today, in 2021, you are only reaching it via boat and then via foot. So, folks, good luck on your trek. I have to move on.